now let's talk about the two types of meetings. You can have a meeting in your personal room or you can schedule a meeting. Your personal room link is shown below and that link is permanent. It will not change. This link can also be searched on. Notice it's your first name. <clears throat> Notice it's your first name dot last name. Um, so anyone within our Goose Creek system or outside, if they know the beginning portion of the link, all they need to know is to type in someone's first name dot last name to um, try to attend that room. There are some ways that you can lock the room to create a lobby um, where you admit people into the room and we'll show that in the host tools videos. The second type of meeting that you can have is one that you plan ahead of time and you schedule that meeting. A scheduled meeting has a unique URL specific to that meeting. If you wanted to start a meeting in your personal room, you simply tap the start a meeting button. It will check your um, audio and video connections. Since my video is currently being used for the screen recording, it's not going to show up. Um, but if I click start a meeting, then this meeting would begin immediately. Um, for participants to be able to join me. For a scheduled meeting, you have to plan that ahead of time. So let's look at how to schedule a meeting and the different settings that go along with it. So we're going to tap schedule. Once here at the top, you're going to leave the pro meeting alone. Meeting topic you can change. By default, it will say GCCISD, and I would say to be as specific as possible as your for your meeting topic because this is the title for your meeting. I'm going to call this Roberts dash first period, and let's say I teach biology, so I'm going to make this my biology um, meeting. The meeting password you can leave as these random letters and numbers. Depending on how you share it out with students, that password is going to be included. If you want to change it, simply tap inside that box. It will give you the parameters on what the password must include. Next, directly underneath is where you pick the date and the time for the meeting. So I'm going to click on that option and I'm going to schedule this meeting for today at 10 a.m. And let's say this meeting is going to last for one hour. You can change it. Um, just because I say an hour, if the meeting goes longer than an hour, it is not going to end the meeting um, without me in it or with everybody in it. So I'm going to tap done. Then if you look directly underneath that, you have an option for um, recurrence. The recurrence option allows you to set up patterns on when this event occurs. So you can have this meeting repeated weekly, daily, monthly, or yearly, and you can choose when it occurs. So if I need this meeting to occur every day or every weekday with no end date, or I can pick an end date, or I can set a number of meetings, then this meeting will recur every day on um, my calendar and then on the calendar that I send this to. You can also choose weekly and then pick the days of the week that this uh, meeting needs to occur on if it's not happening every single day. So if I need this to happen on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I can select that and say every week. Underneath that you have the option for attendees. You can choose to list in um, the students that this needs to go to specifically, or what I would suggest is add yourself. That way you will get a copy of what the um, notification looks like for attendees, and then you can either forward that meeting notification to your students using Google Classroom um, or Seesaw or you can copy the link and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Um, if you are going to have other people that may need to be the host or an alternate host, 
definitely add them in as an attendee here and then once their name pops up if you see off to the right of that there'll be a little person with a check mark if you click on that option it will turn blue and that means that this person is an alternate host the point of an alternate host is if for some reason I can't start the meeting as the host, then the alternate host would be able to. So let's say it's time for this meeting to occur, I'm out sick, then my alternate host would be able to start the meeting in my place. Underneath attendees, you have advanced options. So we're going to click on that link. And then you have three main categories. You have audio connection options, which will let you adjust um, what you are going to choose as your connection type. There is an option for entry and exit tones. Personally, I like to turn this to no tone. That way you do not hear a beep when new people jump onto the meeting and you will not hear the person's name if they're joining from a phone. Next is agenda. So if you had a meeting agenda link or you wanted to type that agenda in, agenda into your actual meeting, you could do that here. And then the last option for scheduling allows you to um, customize a few more settings here. Um, if you want to automatically record when the meeting starts, click that checkbox. If you um, want to make sure you have a recording of all of your meetings, um, I would suggest checking that just so that you don't forget to actually do the recording or uh, nominate somebody to remind you to make sure you record um, the class time if needed. Um, I would leave registration as none. You can do an email reminder if you are inviting people directly. Then you've got meeting options. If you click on edit meeting options, you can change some of the settings over here um, to allow for notes, file transfer. Um, you can also turn on or off chat as well. By default, the chat settings are set so that attendees, attendees cannot privately chat with one another. They can only chat publicly with everyone as a group. And then the last option is edit attendee privileges, where again, you can set some settings for what the attendees can be able to do when the meeting begins. Um, I would leave these all as the default. I wouldn't um, change any of these. I especially would not check other participants here. Um, that way the students can't be having private chats um, during the meeting. They can only um, participate in a private chat with you or presenters and if you want to turn those off as well you could. So once you have all of your settings done you're going to click schedule and you will have the meeting information on your screen. You will also receive an email as the host with the information so that you can add it to your calendar. And if you added yourself as a participant or any other participants you've added, they will also get the information as well. You can also share this meeting by copying this link and pasting this link to share with any participants that need to come. I would use this with a note of caution um, because if you share this link it could possibly be shared as well um, but that's what your meeting lobby is for and you do have the ability to expel people or kick them out if they join the meeting and they shouldn't have um, so you could take this meeting link copy and paste it and put it into your google classroom your seesaw or send it in an email to any participants that needed to join so i'm going to go back to my meeting list and now I see my uh, meeting that appears. This is me as the um, host. And then this is the meeting link as the participant. If I needed to make any changes to this meeting, I can click on it. I can copy it. I can edit to make changes um, either to this meeting or the entire series. I can also delete the meeting as well if I need to. So those are kind of the settings on how you would schedule the meeting. And then once you're ready to start the meeting, again, you see it in upcoming meetings and either from your calendar, from the email, or from this WebEx screen, you can click the start button to start that meeting. 
So that's how you can get started with your personal room or scheduling meetings in WebEx. Next, we're going to talk about some of the different host tools.